it kind of, I don't know, drove us all insane for about a week there, but at least we got a new bus now, and everything's okay. First world problems, right? Yeah. <laughs> true, true. But I, I can imagine, I mean, heat is really uncomfortable, and heat in the south is extra uncomfortable. Yeah, all the states that you don't want to break in, I think it was from Nevada all the way over through um, Alabama, so it was just like right through the heat of the south. So that can be quite testing. How did how did you guys manage to <laughs> keep sane and not kill each other? Because I would not last more than a day. We went that successful, really. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. I mean, Matt was even like stabbing couches and everything, just trying to uh, take out our frustration. It was pretty miserable, but um, you know, it would. Uh, it would make getting to the venue and playing a show that much better. <laughs> yeah, right now we're sitting in air conditioning, which is pretty great too. So I mean, to let out your frustrations on stage and uh, and uh, yeah, I feel like it kind of helped in that sense. But uh, I I wouldn't trade go back to it again. <laughs> no, no, I think that uh, no one would want to do that in the middle of summer. Um, I talked to you briefly right before we started about. Um, summer coming to an end and it's almost fall which means school starting what were you like as a high school teenager as a high school teenager I don't know like I was uh, like I always like tried to play sports you know because like my brothers did and stuff and but then like once I got into high school like I started skateboarding and, and getting into like this type of music I guess more so um, I don't know. I was I was a choir dork that just uh, got along with everybody. I guess you know. <laughs> well, you get along with everyone now, so that that's not not too not too far of a stretch. Um, you grew up in Michigan, correct? Yes. What kind of uh, what radio stations do you grow up listening to? We didn't really have like not good ones really I mean it was either new metal or pop radio. That was like your two choices or like um, and. I grew up near Flint, so like, there was like a couple like ghetto rap stations as well. But um, yeah, so it was all top forty or or uh, new metal, pretty much. You didn't really have anything like to expand your horizons very much. But uh, so I I usually just listened to the oldie station. You know, that's what my parents grew me up on, and that's so that's what I stuck to. Okay, so when things got tough as a teenager, what sort of music did you turn to? Um, I, I would always, like, steal my brother's CDs and stuff, you know, and he was, like, into, like, the alternative grunge scene, you know, like Nirvana and and Pearl Jam and Red Hot Chili Peppers and all that stuff, so Regents Machine, Tool, so that, I guess that's, like, kind of, like, what I would go to for an outlet, you know, either that or, or some, uh, some hip-hop or something, but I, I wasn't, like, a, a serious kick of, uh, getting into like 80s uh rap for a while i don't know was it like i was like in this like obsessed with like break dancing movies and stuff and i don't know i was, I was all over the place <laughs> nice nice why do you think uh even kids now uh turn to music when things are tough well i, I just feel like um i don't know it's something to romanticize too and and uh you know uh, help you deal with your frustrations and and really just um, hold on to when things aren't perfect, you know, because everybody always wants things to be perfect even though they can't be, but and a lot of times the lyrical content um, lets, lets people uh, you know, portray their emotions that way, so I feel like it's definitely imp important in adolescence, you know, like I've I've noticed a difference of how I relate to music from then till now and and um i can i can see why it is like a, a younger crowd clings on to our, our music you know i i see i mean I, I know that there's always been cycles of fandom especially with the female set you know the beatles and the rolling stones and boy bands in the 80s and 90s but oh, i know no. there, there are and i just i mean i get it everyone's got to have their thing um but even just seeing kids of, of various ages and boys and girls become very passionate and so emotional when they see a band live, um, it, it just makes me ask that question to every band because I always wonder, you know, their fans 
are there's always going to be devoted fans, but to have fans be so moved. It's crazy. Man. It gives me like a different outlook of like when I go to a concert now than what I did like when I, I was in high school going to concerts. You know, it seems so much more like larger than life than it does now being back behind it all and and actually doing it. You know, so when I go to a concert now, like I just like to observe. You know, but. I used to get in the mosh pit a bit back in the day. <laughs> nice. No break dancing? Um, not in the mosh pit, no. I don't think. No, but I would have I would have paid to see that though. Um, the last time we talked, well, we talked briefly at the uh, Alternative Press Awards, but the last time we talked about your music was back in March in Dallas at South by So What. So I wanted to ask um, about three specific specific songs. Um, but we don't have to talk about those specific songs if you don't have any good things. Well, not good things, but uh, either talk about the personal significance or some hidden meanings because, let's face it, your um, song titles are always uh, a, a little uh, a little tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, a little left field. That's a good way to say it. So let's start off with uh, Old Fish Lips is Dead Now. The title or the lyrics? Either or. Um, the title is about this... Uh girl that Derek, our drummer, used to date, and she actually died, <laughs> and he said she used to kiss like a fish. <laughs> I know, it's kind of brutal, but it, it's all, and, and, uh, we regard it as paying homage to her, at least, you know, so. <laughs> um, uh, that one, I guess, is, is uh, about just like, <clears throat> like Sometimes uh, you expect too much out of like a relationship with another person, and when it doesn't end up the right way, you just kind of, uh, you know, um, you have your struggles and, and stuff. You know, you want to hold on so so bad, but sometimes it's just too hard to. And I feel like that's kind of what's portrayed in that song. What about 3 a.m.? Um, 3 a.m. Uh, basically like Craig's way of saying it, and like it, it, it's hard for him to be in like a relationship because he has this constant struggle of like uh, being <coughs> uh, of chasing his, his goals and not knowing how to balance the relationship with with that um, passion as well and you know like what are you going to regret more the fact that you lost that person or the fact that you gave up your chasing your dreams you know so that's what that song's about pretty much and that's a tough question to answer, too. What about uh, expensive conversations and cheap motels? Um, I'm not sure what the story is behind the title of that song. I'll never ask Craig, but uh, I mean, I guess you can run with your imagination. On that. <laughs> I don't know. But um, uh, that one, we were just kind of like, uh, you know, let's let's do something we've never done with a song before and, and really just be blunt and and let people get out anger, you know, like, like I remember driving around listening to Rage Against the Machine back in the day, and whenever it would come to the part of, you know, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, it was just, it, like, I just used to want to, like, break everything, and I always said, like, I would never pull over if I was getting pulled over and that song was on, you know, so <laughs> we're just, like, let's kind of, like, channel this new emotion, or different emotion that we've never, like, really uh, targeted before, and, and that's where we went lyrically with it, and yeah, we just wanted to get out some spite, and everybody, everyone has a little bit, even if they want to admit it, you know, so. They all do. They all do. So some of the songs on Devil seem very polished and almost geared towards radio. Was that intentional or just sort of came to be? Um, I mean, we weren't writing exactly for it, but, um, you know, as... We've grown as musicians, like, uh, there's certain aspects to the songs that are important for us to in include, and I guess, like, uh, going towards those goals, I guess, kind of uh, made a couple of the songs kind of feel that way, and, uh, um, but, yeah, I mean, it was never like, oh, we have to write a radio hit, I don't think we're really a radio band necessarily, you know, I mean, like, uh, I there's definitely an appeal to the band, but I don't know if it's something that, like, the world can handle, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I mean, like, it's, it's like our music 
style just falls in like a weird nook that can't really be did, like uh, pinpointed and so I mean it's not like we were intentionally trying to go towards the radio by any means now. Radio is uh, is tough definitely in 2014. What are your opinions? Which do you prefer? Uh, sort of the terrestrial radio stations, the, the land-based or the satellite radio? Um, I When I listen to radio it's usually uh, satellite radio, yeah. I, I like uh, Alt Nation a lot, you know, and there's a few other ones that I'll, I'll listen to on there, but a lot of times, like, I don't know, Pandora's really cool, you know, so either that or iTunes radio. Um, but I don't know. Oh, actually, if I get in my car, first thing I put on is sports talk. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't even listen to music. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, so how do you go about creating a set list uh, for this tour? For this tour, there's uh, heavier bands than the past tours that we've been on. So we figured, you know, just choose, like, a lot of our songs that have the most energy and, and go over well with uh, fans of heavier music. So, um, yeah. I mean, there's one point where we slow it down with a letter from Janelle, but other than that, it's all pretty high energy. Do you keep the set list the same every night, or do you change it up? Um, yeah, we usually, uh, like, we we put, like, one too many in so we can decide which one, which song we want to cut we, um, each night, you know, and it's usually different, and we just kind of base it off of, like, how we feel like the crowd is acting and, and which song will go over better. So there's, like a few that we'll choose from to, to cut one of them every night. Oh, good. So that keeps it a little different. Yeah, it changes in that way, but, um, I mean, it's the same core group of songs that we're choosing from either way. At least it's not the very same set list every night. That could that could get a little rough because it's still pretty close. It's still pretty close. It is. But n as soon as this tour ends, do you have any time off before your next tour with the Day to Remember and Bring Me the Horizon? I think we have three or four days. Woo! <laughs> But um, uh, it'll be nice to, we haven't supported a tour, um, I mean, I guess besides Warped, if you count that, but we haven't supported a tour in years, and uh, like, especially since we got this lineup back together, it's just been constantly headlining, so it's going to be nice to go out there and try to win over a different fan base again, you know? Um, I mean, I love headlining and playing to our fans that come out to see us in particular, but it's always good to challenge yourself in different ways, and, and um, I think... Uh, that tour is, is definitely what we needed to do on this cycle to, to challenge ourselves and, and grow as a band. And it's a, a great lineup. Oh, yeah. So that's also got to be encouraging. But what's sort of what, what looks to an outsider like nonstop touring, I mean, two or three days off is not <laughs> really a break. Uh, it's, it's gonna be rough. <laughs> How do you guys keep positive and, and make sure that you guys don't fall into old trappings and, and just keep moving forward? Um, I mean, we, you just have to find things that, uh, to each person that can make each other happy and make each other, uh, and, like, be happy together, you know, find things that you can do and, uh, and uh, common interests and stuff, you know, like, um, almost every day we try to, like, set up a basketball hoop and, and play basketball, you know, just to get our mind out of the music world and, and, uh, and, uh, communicate and get along on a, on a different aspect, you know, so things like that are important, and, um, you know, like, we'll have our loved ones out to travel with us and, and stuff, too, as well, so, um, yeah, I guess each person has their own, their own way of, of doing that, but, um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's just all about getting up on that stage together and having a good time. That's good, and I, I saw somewhere they got to play basketball indoors, the other day in the venue uh yeah we set up a hoop in, indoors we did that today too nice yeah, we're trying to convince one of our techs to drag the hoop in the middle of the mosh pit and then have craig walk on top of the crowd and slam dunk it during the setup how sick would that be <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> that would be great because i mean if if you're going to crowd surf you got to make it different yeah i mean uh Breathe Carolina in the middle of their warp set, David actually gets in a canoe and surfs the crowd. So, I mean, before the end of tour, you've got to come up with something unique. And I think making a slam dunk would be... Yeah, I don't think anybody's done that before, so 
that could be a, a good topic, I think. <laughs> Craig, 